Thanks for joining us for the interview portion of the Data Speaks competition created in partnership with RFG 2018 and Sequent. I'm Nicole Doucette, a science communication specialist with Sequent, and I'm joined today by Evelyn from the University of British Columbia. So welcome. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so your original abstract title was, Do You Trust Your Neodymium Isotopic Ratios? So, what is your revised non-specialist abstract title? It's somewhat similar. It's just, do you trust your data? Much easier to understand, yeah. though. <laughs> so, what question are you trying to answer? I think the main question that I'm trying to answer is, what are the limitations to acquiring precise and accurate data? Um, and that's because Earth scientists, they want to answer the big questions about the history of our planet. But when there is no one there to observe it and write down what happened, it's very difficult. So you need to use data that you have from rocks or other materials. And that is only possible because depending on the composition of the material or the processes that it's gone through, these materials are going to have differences in their composition. And depending on the process that the sample has gone through, these variations can be quite small. So to try to get the most accurate possible data is very important in order to get the right interpretations or conclusions. Right. Okay. And so what concept does someone need to know to understand your research? Um, the first one is a system that I'm studying, which is the LMN neodymium and the reason why it's an important one is because it can be used for a variety of purposes. You can use its composition to determine the age of a sample or the source of a sample and many other things. And the other thing that you need to understand is that to measure it you use scientific instruments. The instrument that I am using is one of the most widely used ones in geochemistry and in order to use it, you have to introduce your sample in it, and you can do it in a variety of ways. You can dissolve it in acid and then turn it into an aerosol, or you can shoot it with a laser. <laughs> and after that, you have to turn it into an ion. So you have to make all of your sample turn into atoms and then remove an electron from it. Wow. And then to do that, you have to... It, what this instrument does is it heats up your sample to temperatures of up to 10,000 Kelvin. And just for comparison, that is hotter than the surface of the sun. Wow. And that is one of the reasons why this instrument is good too, because it can do that to most of the elements in the periodic table, so you can analyze most of them. And after that, you use magnets to separate them by mass and then quantify them. And after going through so many things, one of the questions that you might ask is, did the composition of the sample change? Like, did going through all of this change your composition? So I use standards, which are materials that we know the composition of, to try to track down if all of these small processes did change the composition of your sample, and if you can correct for it if it actually has changed. Great. And so what role, then, does data play in your research? Well, data is my <laughs> research. What I'm trying to do, pretty much, is get the best possible data that you can use. And one of the reasons why this is vital is also because if you think about neodymium, the reason why you can determine the age of samples with it is because another element called samarium, um, when it has the mass 147, it can decay and change by radioactive decay into 143 neodymium. And that ha the, if you have a certain amount of samarium, it's gonna take 106 billion years for half of it to turn into neodymium. And for comparison again, the Earth is 4.5 billion years. So that's 20 times as much. So any variations that you have are actually quite small. So any changes that your instrument can inflict into your sample, might actually change your interpretations by a lot. Right, okay, and so um, why is it important for you then to share your data and your research? I think it's because unlike many other um, scientists in the geochemical sciences or the um, earth sciences, I am not using data to try to answer a specific question about how our planet has been formed or what happened, but I am trying to improve data to get the most 
accurate results. So if you are a nerve scientist and you use neodymium and you use this instrument that I'm studying to get your data, then my research might have an impact on it. So there isn't just one big question that I am answering, but my research might have impact into so many fields and so many projects out there. So it's very important for me that it gets out there so everyone can actually make use of it and so we can understand our planet in the best possible way. Great. Thanks for joining us today, Evelyn. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, of course. Uh, so thanks to everyone else for joining us as well. Once again, this is the Data Speaks competition at RFG 2018, created in partnership with Sequent. You can watch the videos on YouTube or Twitter, hashtag CDataSpeak.